I'm David G. Sheshnag Yoga Center. What on earth is Kundalini? I just wanted to mention the present moment and the now. I personally don't think it's really where you're going to find spiritual illumination. Maybe it's possible, but I think it's more of a relaxation technique where you bring everything back because most of our time is spent outside of the present moment. It's either stewing over the past or anticipating the future. Stresses to do with anything, to do with everything in life. But when you bring it back to the present moment, you've got mindfulness, you've got awareness, but it's all in the present second, which is cool because it gets rid of the vibrations in your mind to do with the vrittis, which is correct knowledge, incorrect knowledge, fantasy, sleep and memory. I personally believe it's a relaxation technique rather than a path to spiritual illumination. Why do I believe that? Because Ram Das talked about it 50 years ago. Here and now, he brought out a book. What good has it done? Hasn't become mainstream. It's helped a lot of people be peaceful. Has it lot, uh, uh, actually enlightened a lot of people? Or has it just freed their mind from the past and future and brought it into the now? The latest person to talk about it is Eckhart Tolle. Great teachers, don't get me wrong, beautiful beings. But is it systematically working through the different dimensions of being to end up in the dimension of bliss? Or is it just to bring your mind in to forget about all the shit in your life that's going on in everyday life and experience? I don't know, I'm just asking questions. That's my interpretation. Seems like more of a relaxation technique rather than a technique that's specifically designed for spiritual illumination. No doubt that some people can be spiritually illuminated by the teachings of these people. And maybe being in the now is all there has to be. It certainly encourages and it increases the expression of love. I'm more of a literal interpretation of mind. So I think that according to the yogic philosophy, which is the philosophy that I've chosen to adhere to, that philosophy has stages, has different stages of meditation, social constraints, personal constraints, physical postures, you know, it goes on. Expansion of prana, withdrawal of the mind from the senses, which could be living in the now. Take everything back from everything to do with your senses, bring it into the present moment. Then yoga encourages focus on a form of divinity. Then replace the form of divinity with a non-form divinity. Then, if you can concentrate long enough, absorb yourself in that divinity. I don't know if here and now or being in the now actually talks about divinity, the great being that is responsible for coordinating every experience in your life. Maybe it just breaks down yourself to understand that your different energetic forms like the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, and then you bring it in, hopefully you experience the substratum of all existence, the coordinator of all that there is. What is it? The true self. Hopefully you land in the lap of the true self and you can surrender your old self when you get into the now. That might be experiential, the spiritual illumination we're talking about. Who knows? I personally see it as a bit of a relaxation technique. But as a race, we're only going into an experience of opening the fourth chakra, which is bringing the divine down, bringing the physical up, experiencing the Christos through our heart, unconditional love for the fellow human. Good luck. That's just an opinion. It's my opinion. I'll give it to you for free. If you've got an opinion, 
give it back to me for free. Om Namah Shivaya, Sheshnag.com. What on earth is Kundalini? Peace.